All right guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Dalton. Today I just wanna run through something really quick. So I've been looking online, I'm about to swap the hub on my brand new Wahoo. It's the 21 Kicker Smart Trainer. I run 12 speed SRAM. So I have a SRAM Force cassette that I'm gonna put on here. But the thing is, and the problem here is that the Wahoo Kicker comes set up with this 11 speed Sunrace cassette and free hub body. So what we wanna do is we wanna swap this. And when I was looking online, trying to find a good outlet um, that talked about how we wanna go about swapping this, it was really tough to find anything that was basically comprehensive or really like gave me the lowdown on what I needed to do step by step. So I wanted to take it, break it down and make it super simple for you guys. So I know this is sort of abnormal. I'm coming to you from my floor, but I figure this is kind of the best vantage point to show you guys what's going on. So there are a few things that you're gonna need and if you don't already have them, um, it might be worth just borrowing them from a friend, but you need a chain whip. Looks like this right here. So I'm gonna use my park tool chain whip I already have to get rid of cassettes. Uh, 17 millimeter cone wrench or even just a crescent uh, would do the trick because you need that to remove the nut that's inside of here. Um, obviously you'll need your XD free hub body or XDR free hub body that goes with your SRAM 12 speed. And uh, they will basically, it'll come in a package and then there'll be some extra parts in here. So you'll have the new nut that you need for the outside of it and a spacer for an 11 speed SRAM setup. But if you're running 12 speed, um, you won't need this. So all in all, um, those are the things you'll need. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have some grease on hand. Oh, and then one thing before I forget is you'll actually need your cassette removal tool. So I use this one here, it looks like this. Goes ahead and uh, this will pop the free hub off for you. I use a crescent on this while I was um, holding the cassette tight with the park tool. So uh, just as a heads up, I already started this process a little bit, but I did put the cassette back on just so you guys can see what that looks like. First thing is first, what we want to do is we want to take your cassette removal tool, pop this bad boy in here, get that lined up with the free hub body and everything. And then obviously if you start to twist to break this loose, it's just going to spin. So the thing that you need to do is get your chain whip on here and make sure that this is going to back it up in the opposite direction. So when you spin this left, you want it to basically break this lock ring loose. Now I use the crescent on this bad boy here. Um, I don't know if that's the best idea ever, but it does the job, it gets it done. If I can size it appropriately, all right. So you go here and then you're gonna break your lock ring loose, right? Like I said, I already broke it loose. I was standing up when I did it, so it was a little bit easier. Uh, super simple, and boom, you're gonna spin this get your lock ring off and out of there. Keep in mind guys that the cassette that comes on here is split into different parts, right? All your smaller teeth here are gonna be independent teeth with spacers, and then your larger portion is gonna be one continuous cassette. So of course, if you have your quick release out already, you can pull this quick release piece out, and you can just set that to the side for now. And then obviously your lock ring is gonna come next. And so this is tightened to like 40 Newton meters or whatever, no big deal, uh, go ahead and remove the whole cassette here. I suggest if you're not gonna reuse this cassette, zip tie it or something like this to keep the whole thing intact for later use if you do use it anywhere else. So all that stuff to the side here and then now we're gonna dive into the actual free hub body swap. So what I'll actually do is I'll just zoom in here or I'll just uh, bring the camera closer so you guys can see what I'm actually doing and that's the important thing. You don't need to see my face. So let's go ahead and jump in here. I'll get it up close and personal with the Wahoo and you can see what's going on. All right guys, so like I said, I'm not gonna make this a major production or anything. Um, so maybe the lighting's a little off, sorry about that. But now is when you need this 17 millimeter. Uh, so you're gonna pop that bad boy on here. And then if this were tight, obviously you break it loose here. Not too hard also, super easy to break loose. Um, went this way and then just jump on there with your little cone wrench. And then boom, you break it loose. And you go ahead and pull this nut out. And I, you don't need to reuse this one since you do get one with the XDR hub, so uh, no big deal. All right, so now the free hub body will just slide right off. We'll go ahead and slip that off of there. Boom, you're set. So uh, keep this all intact also for future use. I, I'm taking this nut and I'm just dropping it in the back right here for now. And then one thing you will wanna do, so there's a spacer in here. Uh, you wanna maintain this spacer when you put the new 
XDR Freehub body in there. So I'm gonna pull this out for now just to set it to the side so I can clean up all the grease that's currently in here and then replace it with like the same type of grease that I'm gonna use on the actual XDR hub body. All right, now that I've got that mostly clean, I can come back in here and put my own grease in there. And then we should be ready to go ahead and install the new Freehub body. I'm terrible, guys. I don't wear gloves. I'm just like, honestly, the worst person to do this. But, um, sue me. I never claimed to be a bike mechanic. Get all this grease in here. And you can apply this pretty liberally. All right, so as I mentioned before, guys, um, this 12-speed SRAM hub that you see right here, it will come with this additional spacer. And now this is if you're going to run an 11-speed cassette on there. So... No need for this. You can just put it to the side. Make sure to hold on to it though in case you ever do want to swap it for the 11 speed. Also keep in mind, the nut uh, that comes with this is going to be the one that you're going to go ahead and swap and put right here on the end of this. So, uh, grease up the back end here. Take a little bit of grease. Put on these bad boys here. And bad boys is not a technical term, so you know, whatever. And you know, like I said before, you can put Pretty liberal amount on here. Uh, no need to be stingy with the grease. So first thing is first, when you're about to install this, you wanna make sure you put your spacer back on here. You're gonna go ahead and you're gonna install your free hub body now. So now the tolerance is super tight, so it can be a little bit off here and there. You just gotta make sure you get it on there right. Um, and then if you're struggling to get it in here, kinda just um, pull out, spin it um, to the left, to the left a little bit and then that should allow it to seat in here and you can hear that nice and smooth free spin sounds good all right so now it's time to go ahead and install our SRAM 12 speed cassette this part's super simple now that we have this set up on here um, first thing is first though your in nut you want to go ahead and install this on here and now keep in mind uh, you don't want this thing to be too awful tight because then you're not going to get that good free spin so just take that Get it on here, uh, take your 17 mil, and then uh, if you have cone wrenches, it's ideal, because this is thin, but yeah, just take this, snug it down, nothing crazy. So you're in place, you've got good free spin, ready to go. All right, so now I'm gonna pop my cassette on here. It should pop into place, boom. So you hear that, clicks into place nice and solid there. And I'm gonna go ahead, get this on here. Now, if I had a proper tool for it, um, I would just use the other end of one of these if I was going to do it right here. But instead, I'm just going to use my crescent because guess what? It works just fine. So I'm going to hold the flywheel. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this bad boy down and it will walk my cassette on there. And again, this doesn't have to be crazy, crazy tight. Just snug it up nicely. Boom. I think it was like four or five clicks that I felt like. So and now you've got a nice smooth free spin here. Absolutely no problems. So I'll go ahead and I'll mount the bike up, get it on there, and I'll be ready to ride. I guess the last quick note before I do go, guys, is you're going to need this adapter, which is like adapter D. And you'll see on one side it says 148, and the other side it says 142. So depending on the length of your 12 millimeter through axle, you're going to put that side out. So if you're running a 148, you would go this way so it's longer. If you're running on 142, you're gonna put it in this direction so that you see the 142 on the outside right there. And then, boom, you're set up to go. Uh, put your through axle adapter C on the outside here instead of your quick release. And now you're actually set up and ready to go. So yeah, if you have a through axle, this is the setup you need. Um, that's it guys. It's a super simple process. I just know that I didn't find a ton of stuff online um, related to this install. So here's my SRAM 12 piece cassette ready to run with my SRAM Force Axis setup. Uh, if you like this video, if you thought it was educational at all, go ahead and hit that like button for me. And then, you know, if you want to see race content, indoor cycling content, uh, just adventuring around, not necessarily all training content, then um, yeah, subscribe to the channel, check it out. And I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you have any questions for me, drop them in the comments down below and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Just a real quick bonus, guys. Um, I went ahead and I mounted the bike up here, put the through axle on, and then I'm gonna clip in real quick and give it a little spinny action so I can show you guys uh, basically 
how it operates, so maybe a little bit of proof that I did it right, I guess. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm gonna jump on here. Don't mind the filthy bike or the filthy shoes. I just got back from Mammoth riding in the snow. Uh, yeah, if you wanna see that video, you should check it out.